Can we appreciate Deborah George? Can we appreciate our evangelist, Deborah George? She finished off by saying she was invited to come minister. When she came to minister, I was a student. Everything is prophetic. Everything connects. Evangelist, if you don't mind standing on the pulpit, I was a student and I was, I had a very big job. I was a big man. I had a big job. You know, pastor woke up thinking about me every day. Big, tell your neighbor, big job. I was the warehouse worker. Big job. Had never met pastor. Never sat one second and had a conversation with him. But I knew a lot about him. The reason why I knew a lot about him is because God, when I came to Columbus, he said, get rid of all your other DVDs and CDs of other preachers. There's one voice you must listen to. The reason why some of us miss the purpose of God in our life is because we are people of many things. You have many social media accounts. You're on every platform. So you never maximize anything. The Bible says that many are the plans in a man's heart. But the Bible does not say the plans of God will prevail. No, sir. It says the will, singular. We live amongst a generation that wants to do many things. While yet Paul said, this one thing I do. Evangelist Deborah has mentioned the power of focus. The necessity of focus. My life has been guided by one prophetic voice. The day I made a decision that I'm going to Vala Christian College. The day I made a decision that I'm coming to sit under the anointing of Pastor Rod Parsley. I made a decision what the prophetic voice in my life is. Have you made that decision? The problem with this generation is that we are people of many things. The Bible says to us, you have many teachers. You have many teachers. You have one father who has fathered you in the ministry. I was a warehouse worker and every day I worked about 12 hours, my wife can attest to it, 13, sometimes 14, depending on what was happening in the ministry. And I would play from the first to the last teaching of pastor. Taking the word, taking the word throughout the day, throughout the day, listening to the sermons, listening to the sermons. Nobody knew me. I had so many insecurities. Before I came, I used to build technology and I was failing at that. But one day, when I got focused, when I got focused, this one thing I do. What's your one thing? The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. What's the one voice that's a dominant voice in your life? I can give you testimonies of when one word that pastor has said has guided my life. One word. I remember one day we were on a road trip together traveling. 
Because I'll never let him go anywhere alone. I'll chase him down. Ain't no shame in my game. Chase him down. One day he said, this generation needs to be taught. Simple, teaching. And that day, I committed myself to the teaching of the word of God. I've read so many books by William Booth. So many books of the ancient in the last couple of months and years. My wife can tell you, during quarantine, it was book after book after book. I might as well read something. I'm at home. But I would have never gotten there if it wasn't for one voice. What's the one voice that guides you? What's the one voice that shows you the way? Oh, but, but I listen to the voice of God, do you? The Bible says, how are you going to love a God you can not see? When you can't love your brothers that you can see. The Bible says, how shall they hear if they have no preacher? Elisha would have never been Elisha without Elijah. Stop lying to yourself. It matters who lays hands on you. <laughs> Timothy would have never been Timothy if it wasn't for Paul. Stop lying to yourself. There are no self-made men in the kingdom of God. It doesn't work that way. Jesus needed John the Baptist. Elisha needed Elijah. And you need a prophetic apostolic voice that approves your gifts, that approves the callings of God, that looks at you in the eyes and tells you you can do greater and tells you you can go further and sets the pace for your destiny. It matters what you're connected to. It matters. It matters. Nothing great about my family apart from who we are connected to. But the last couple of months have disconnected so many people. So many people. On that day, Evangelist Deborah George was standing right there. I was right here. I've written about it. Had come for chapel. I loved the altars. I was right here. Praying, praying, praying. And she looked at me and she was preaching about relight the fire. I'll never forget it. Relight the fire. Relight the fire. And I was telling God, light a fire on the inside of me. I'm about to graduate, Lord, write a fire on the inside of me. I'm about to finish my time. What did you bring me here for? You may not hear him in the first year. You may not hear him in the second. But just because you haven't had him doesn't mean he's not about to speak. Sometimes God will hold back the whole plan. Because he knows you cannot bear it. The Bible says, I have so many things to tell you. But you cannot bear them. So silence is that God cares. And the Bible says the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Stop worrying about what the plan is for 2022. You should worry about what has God asked you to do today. If you can't obey God with coming to an altar, don't expect to obey God with going to the nations. I'm going to say that one more time because your neighbor missed it. If you can't obey God with coming to the altar, if you can't obey God with showing up in class, if you can't obey God with clapping your hands, lifting up your voice, shouting, spinning, don't expect to obey God when it comes with going to the nation. It's the little things. My God, I wish I would shake you. It's the little things. I've been on this journey a while now. I've been at it a while. I lead several churches around the world. Church leaders who are almost twice my age. And I've come to find out life is made of the little things. 
It's the small things. Saul, King Saul, lost the throne of our little decision. Of our little decision. You, be, you must become a master of the little things. You must become a master of making small, consistent, good decisions. If you cannot manage $10, stop looking for a $10 million ministry. Can manage a little pocket money. Do, do you know ministry? Oh. Do you know ministry? Do you know what God requires? He requires for us to be faithful stewards. Managing ministry in the middle of crisis. It was hard enough before this whole shabako. But there are men and women who are doing greater now than they were before. Believe me, they are. But it takes your ability to manage the little things. That day all I did was obey by coming to the altar. Count not the little voices ordinary. Don't consider them ordinary. When God says, wake up at five in the morning and pray. For this whole year, we've been praying in the morning as a church. Wake up and pray. When God says, come to the altar and seek my faith. Don't, don't decide that you're going to get comfortable. Don't decide you're going to get comfortable. Evangelist Deborah George obeyed the voice of the Lord that day. And she spoke into my life. She looked at me and said, after talk, telling us about cloud in Texas, as how I say it, where she's from, telling her testimony. And she said, nations, a little word, nations, 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 nations. Some of us are looking for a whole page of prophecy. Well, all God is trying to give you is one word. You're looking for the whole story. Do you know Jesus called his disciples with two words? Follow me. The moments, the little things. You want to be an evangelist? You want to be a preacher? Paul said, Paul said, don't forget the work of, do the work of an evangelist. Why? So that you can make full proof of your ministry. Your ministry is proven by your ability to evangelize. Not your ability to preach. There are many preachers who cannot win one soul. Someone sent me a message and said, can I preach for you? I went through their social media feed. They did not even have one statement on soul winning. I said, you don't want to stand on my pulpit. They'll kick you out. You're not called to be a motivational preacher. This one thing I do. You're not called to be a Google puppet. This one thing I do. You're not called to puppeteer what the generation expects you to do. 
You're called to awaken a generation and turn them from their wicked ways. Whether they clap for you, whether they wave at you, whether they love you, Jeremiah, don't look at their faces. Set your face like a flint. Set your eyes like a flint. What are you focusing on? Are you waiting for the shout? Are you waiting for the clap? Are you waiting for the approval? Are you waiting for the dance? Are you waiting for everybody to tell you how good you've done? My Bible declares there's only one one voice that I want to hear when I stand before the Lord I want him to say to me well done well done well done well done well done thou good and faithful servant shout shout unto God Come on church, it's time we take the weight off. Let's take the weight off. Let's take the weight off. Let's take the weight off. A few more minutes. A few more minutes and we are done. Take the weight off. Take the weight off. You've been focused on the wrong thing. You've been focused on too many things. And God is saying one thing. God is saying one thing. God is saying focus on the one. Focus on one, focus on one, focus on one, focus on one, focus on one. Come on and tell the Lord, clear my focus. Give me divine focus, give me divine focus, give me divine focus, give me laser, laser, laser focus. Too many things. Too many, yeah. Too many things. Yeah. One word, nations. And today, I live in it. Today I have a list of people waiting for churches to be open. But I had to be obedient in one. The Bible is a book of focus. Because the Bible has one message. That's the message of Jesus Christ. The preacher, the real preacher, is a man of focus, a man of one message, for Christ to be lifted up. Every man who God ever used, he gave one mission. Moses, get the children out of Egypt, Get them into the promised land. It's your one mission. We need focus. We need focus. We need focus. So widespread that you never get anything done. So widespread. And I run many organizations, but they all have one focus. One focus. Everything we do must be connected to souls. If one of my organizations hires somebody, they're not just an employee, they're a soul. What's your focus? The Bible has always been drawing us to a divine focus from many to the singular. Some of us have worshipped so many gods that we are like the generation that came after Joshua. That there was a generation that did not know the Lord. We have an idea of self and God. We have a self-made God who's a little bit of Buddha, a little bit of Krishna, a little bit of secular humanism, a little bit of Islam. A God who the whole world accepts. <laughs> we build a Christian life that has shaved off the realities of our faith. The Bible does say many are the afflictions of the righteous. So there are things you should have many. 
like afflictions. But when we go through many afflictions, we think we are not walking in the will of God. When we are persecuted in the streets by many people, where well, God must have not called me, because many people are against me, nobody is accepting me. Please. Well, I tried to go to Bible college and it was hard. There were too many classes. How about this? I thought Bible college would be full of many Christians, but I found out where I went to church and found many sinners. What do you expect when Jesus said, Jesus, friend of sinners, men and women who are broken are drawn to the light of Jesus Christ. Men and women, many, many, many. If I be lifted up, I will draw many. Afflictions. Oh, this, what you need is a backbone if you're going to do anything for God. We are so easily removed. Easily removed. Well, I'm going to use my social media to preach the gospel. I'm going to start a program online. I'm going to start this. And the first time they hate on you, you're ready to quit. Well, I'm going to go on this Bible school thing. I'm going to do this thing. And you're like those January Christians. You buy a gym membership in January. But by the beginning of February, they are sending you letters wondering what happened. I thought you were ready to lose 20 pounds, to lose 30 pounds. It's because your focus is off. Because your focus is off. Jesus is an option, not the only thing. Because you've got another option. You've got plan A, plan B, plan C see if Vala doesn't work out I'm going to go here if this doesn't work out I'm going to go here I'm going to try this person but if they are not good while we are dating I'm going to marry someone else we are so full of options it doesn't work on Facebook you try it on Twitter you try it on Instagram you try it on whatever the snapping one is called and the problem is your focus is off baby tell your neighbor your focus is off your focus your focus is off. Your focus is off. Tell your neighbor from today, from today, from today, this one thing, this one thing, this one thing I do, this one thing I do, shout and receive focus. We've got a few more minutes. We are winding up. Raise up the voice of the Almighty God out of your belly. Shout with focus. Shout with purpose. Shout with destiny. Shout. God is looking for a generation. The Bible says the earth is waiting for a generation that knows their God, that knows their God. And they that know their God, they shall rise up and they shall do exploits. Where is your focus? Divine focus, focus, focus. This one thing I do. Somebody call it. This side, this side, call it. It's one thing I do. It's one thing I do. You're doing the most. What's your one thing? What's your one thing? What's your one thing? Focus. We get persecuted and we are ready to quit. We think God is not for us. We make a shame of the Apostle Paul 
Paul said, can I tell you what many things you should expect when you begin to serve God? He said, afflictions often. Get ready to be afflicted. You want to serve God? Be like David. David said, all my friends have forsaken me. And my own enemy is one of my own household. Get ready for it. Get ready for many people to despitefully use you. This, this side is annoying. I don't know where your amens. I don't know where your amens went. I said, get ready for many people to despitefully use you. Get ready to be rejected. Get ready for them to tell you that you do not know God. Get ready for them to tell you that you're not called. You're not chosen. Paul said, in hunger, often. Paul was in so much hunger that he said, I might as well fast. I know food around, so I might as well count my suffering into sacrifice. Get ready to turn suffering into sacrifice. Get ready to turn suffering. I thought I'd have a shout right there. I thought I'd have a shout right there. I thought I'd have a shout right there. The disciples said in the book of Acts, they were persecuted all around. They went to this city, they were persecuted. They went to this city, they were persecuted. The Bible says many floggings. They were whipped, they were flogged. Do you know what they did? They went into their dorm room and began to cry. Well, God may not be with us. Well, God must not be with us. And they went to the corner and began to get into depression. Do you know what the Bible says? No, sir. The Bible says they went into their prayer closet and they thanked God that they were counted worthy. Ah, feel the Holy Ghost, sir. They thank God that they were counted worthy to be persecuted. They were counted worthy to be talked about. They were counted worthy to suffer for the God. If that's you, shout now. Count it worthy. Count us worthy. Count us worthy. The count us worthy. Worthy to suffer. Worthy to suffer. Worthy to suffer. Worthy to lose. Worthy to lose. Worthy to lose, to lose some friends, to lose some friends. I'm worthy, I'm worthy to lose, to lose my dream, to lose my desires, to lose my passion. Is there somebody who's ready to go through it for God, to go through it for God, to go through it for God? I feel my help coming. The anointing of God is in this room. The anointing of God is in this room. Are you ready? Nobody promised it was going to be easy. Nobody said the way it was going to be easy. They are going to hate on you. They are going to talk about you. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready to lose, to suffer, to die for God. If that's you, let the heavens hear your voice. I'm ready to lay it all down. I'm ready to lay down my plans. I'm ready to lay down the vision. I'm ready to put many things at the altar so that I may take up one thing. David was hated on, but they called him a friend of God. You may not have friends on this earth, but the Bible declares, if you're friends with the world, you're an enemy unto God. The Bible declares, if you're not building with him, you're tearing down. Quit trying to be more like the world and be more like God. This is the generation. We are done, we are done, we are done, we are done. We are done, we are done, we are done. You've got a few more seconds. You've got a few more seconds to pray. You've got a few more seconds to break through. You've got a few more seconds to lay down the weight, to shed the weight. Come on, Judah. 
know where are, where are those who say I'll go through it I'll go through it the Bible says that Caleb was of another spirit where is Caleb where is Joshua I don't care about my reputation the Bible says I am of no reputation I'm of no reputation we didn't come to play with it we came to declare the name of Jesus I want the many things in God. I want the many things in God. Paul said, Paul said, this one thing, that I may know him, that I may know him, that I may know him, that I may know him. I wonder if God can find somebody that says I want to know God. We are done, we are done, we are done. What are you full of? Let go of your self-desires. Let go. Let go of your comparison. Let go of jealousy. Stop looking at someone else's social media and look in the Word of God. Stop looking at someone else's Facebook and look in the book and see what God can do through you. This one thing, this one thing, this one thing, this one thing, this one thing. God has said to somebody who's watching us right now that you've got one thing to do and that's get to Vala Christian College. That's get to Vala Christian College. You're waiting for many instructions. This is your next instruction. This is your burning push. Get to the altars of Vala Christian College, call that number, call that number, and get to Vala Christian College. Obey in the small things. Hey! Hey! Zetaba! Bota! Hey! One thing! Where are my one thing praises? Where are my one thing praises? This is my last praise. One more, one more, one more shout, one more dance, one more wave, one more run. This is it. It's the last lap. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more breath. The breath is a gift. I give it to you. One more. Somebody run. One more run. One more shout, one more praise. Come on, fella. You will be counted worthy to suffer for Christ. You will be counted worthy for them to talk about you. I see somebody who saved the best for last. If all I have is one more breath, I'm going to use it to praise you. I'm going to use it to win souls.
cut the weight off. Take the weight off. Take the weight off. Take the weight off. Take the weight off. We travel light. We travel light around here. We travel easy around here. We travel light around here. Ain't nothing holding me back. Ain't nothing holding me back. I'm here to serve God. I'm here to move. Where you go, I go. Where you say, I say. Where you move, I move. Is there a generation that has made a decision that you will travel light?1 Corinthians 11, 23. How many of you are ready to be made ministers? How many of you are ready to be made evangelists? The Bible says, I appeared to you to make you a minister and a witness. You've had your focus on the wrong thing. Been focusing on how many people are clicking the light, the like button. What if no, not one person likes your video while you're alive? Then when you're gone, a generation catches wind and catches up with what you already knew. And out of that generation, just one goes to your Facebook and sees something that you put up. You're looking at the wrong thing. You're looking at the wind. The Bible says, they that observe the wind, never so. Looking at the wrong thing. You should be looking at obedience. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. God starts it, he will finish it. We've been full of many things. But as I close, I want to show you what Paul was full of. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. He says, are they ministers of Christ? Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. I'm more than a minister. And let's see why he said he was more. When I preached good, they gave me a good offering. I had many invitations in mega churches. Is that what it says? No, sir. It's what it says. In labors abundantly. Are you ready to labor for God? The work of soul winning is not easy. We travel light. We go long distances just to reach one soul. Are you ready to go the whole journey? In labors more abundantly. This is what he had more of. And if you're saying that's what I want, I want us to receive this with hands lifted. And God will see the desires of your heart. And he'll give you the grace to withstand the storm. God will give you the grace to stand when they talk about you. When it looks like nobody cares. With this final prayer, God will give you the grace. In labors ab abundantly. In stripes above measure. 
in prison more frequently in death often of the Jews my own people five times I received 40 stripes save one five times suffered with his own people thrice I was beaten with rods once I was stoned thrice I suffered shipwreck a night and a day I had been in the deep in journeys often in peril of waters often in peril of robbers often we are not talking about someone who was cursed we are talking about the greatest evangelist of the new testament church and we get mad when people don't show up in the pews go to the streets if they don't show up this generation was saved in 2020 so that you can save others it's time to go it's time to go out in journeys often in peril in the waters peril of robbers peril of my own countrymen peril by the heathen peril in the city peril in the wilderness peril in the sea peril amongst false brethren in weariness in painfulness in watching in hunger in thirst in fasting in cold in nakedness you want to be used by God Take out all those pictures of shiny suit preachers on a pulpit and put 2 Corinthians 11 up on the wall. But do you know what Paul says his biggest burden is? The care for the church. The care for the church. In this season, God is looking for a generation that's bold enough to be persecuted for him. Bold enough to be talked about online. In this cancel culture, when they cancel you, it's a testament. The Bible says, when men, when men despitefully use you. The Bible says if they did it to Jesus, they're going to do it to you. You just got to have one focus, church. Come on, Vala. You got to have one focus that you're going to go through it. You're going to go through it. Every hand lifted, those of you online and those of you in this building. It's not easy. It was never meant to be. It's never meant to be. It's never meant to be. Father, your grace is sufficient. You who called us, you also approve us. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Lord, we thank you that you choose us to be your end time evangelists. Lord, you told Gideon to just take 300. Lord, find a few good men who are willing to suffer the heat of battle for you. Find a few good men who will lay hold of the altar and not let go until you move. Father, I pray over everyone under my voice that the zeal of the Lord shall perform the promises of God in our life. Thank you, Lord, that we are not men of fluff. We are men of zeal. We are men of deep roots. We are rooted and grounded in love. Love for you and love for others. When they spit on us, we'll keep preaching Christ. When they spit and slap us, we will love them back. For the commandment is to love God and love people. Thank you, Lord, that there is a love that's in each and every one of us that goes beyond the sufferings of this world. Paul said, the love of God compels me. Thank you, Lord, that there is a compelling love that gives us a divine focus. 
And this weekend, as we get into VIP weekend, as we get into VIP weekend, let every guest who walks into this building get an action that this is where they're supposed to be. Let every person who steps into this place hear not just many words, but one word that bears witness in their spirit that this is where they're supposed to be. And now we come against every spirit of disobedience and we answer disobedience with radical obedience. We answer disobedience with radical obedience. The areas of our life where we have been disobedient, we ask you to forgive us. Give us your grace. Give us your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name. If you love him, put your hands together. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise.